Grab your favorite alcoholic or non-alcoholic beverage, drink responsibly, do not drink and drive, and join us for the latest episode of Why Complain When You Can Wine. Everything in this podcast is purely for entertainment and psychoeducational purposes only. Enjoy. (laughs) Welcome to Why Complain When You Can Wine, making sense of the senseless. Join us as we attempt to make sense of toxic nonsense while drinking wine or any other beverage of your choice. I am Dr. Jody Larman, licensed clinical psychologist. And I always say in the state of California, but then I figure why, because you're not in California, you're in the United States. I mean, sorry, keep talking. My dog is going to chew that. I have to move it. <laughs> Should we start over? Or you want that as part of it? <laughs> oh, just part of it. It's fine. She's just in that mood. Authentic. That's what I like. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I would say California because um, Ashley and Heather were in Colorado, but now you're not even in the United States. So I don't even have to say, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist in the United States. I don't have to say, I'm just going to say I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. There you go. And I'm a licensed therapist from BC. (laughs) Tonight I am drinking. I looked for anything that I thought would fit this topic tonight and I couldn't find anything. So I am just, I had two bottles of this. This is Jay Lore. Oh yeah, that's been around since 1962. Cabernet. They say I've heard good and bad. I've had it before, and I yeah, like it. it's fine. That's been a staple up here forever. It's Paso. Um, a good competitor to that wine is Liberty School. It's better. Oh okay. If I find it, region, yeah. If you see Liberty School down there, it's like they're two competing. They do the same thing, but Liberty School is better quality. And where are they from? Paso, Paso Robles. Okay. So yeah, Monterey Bay, same area. And my glass, I have had this glass. A friend gave it to me for a long time and I've never used it. And it says instant diva, just add wine. Oh, oh, I like that. I kind of need it for tonight, I think, because I want to be a diva tonight with our topic. I think it's a great idea to be a diva with a topic. I decided to have lion hair. I didn't feel like doing it and straightening it. So I let it. Oh, I thought you were going to, I thought lion hair was what you were drinking. (laughs) I just didn't do it. So it's. So I just let it go curly because that's what it usually does. Um, yeah, I'm not drinking wine. I'm drinking good old Kraken. And you're yeah. allowed to. You can have rum, rum, wine. rum. And I don't have a fun saying on my glass, but I need to get some. I'll, I'll, if I drink out of a coffee mug one time, I've got some fun coffee mugs that have good sayings on them. But anyways, aside from that, um, I am Brianne Burry and I am a licensed, uh, registered therapist, uh, from Canada, but we I, we don't need to really establish that. I think we've done that a few times. And tonight's topic is going to be a good one. We're doing some Q and A again on probably the most popular topic in the world when it comes to, um, you know, modern day psychology, and that would be good old NPD narcissism. So why does the narcissist lie? I'm going to say this lie. really quick before you finish this. We have a lot of Q and A's that we can do. And Mm -hmm. some of them are a lot of fun to answer. And I think this is one of the fun ones. Mm -hmm. It is one of the fun ones. Uh, We we talk about it for a really long time. Yes. So there's two questions that were asked that are very, very similar. You already said one is, um, I don't remember which one you said, but what are examples or do narcissists always lie? And some examples of narcissists lying. Oh my God. So much fun. This is why you're drinking out of the diva cup because yes. you're, you're about, you're about to laugh folks. I'm going to say right now, the examples that uh, Dr. Larman and I will be giving you are, it's like, literally, you're just going to shake your head. Let's just use Trump. For example, some of the shit that comes out of that guy's mouth. And yet he literally thinks people believe him. It's barbaric. It's embarrassing as a Canadian. I can't even watch him on television because I, I, I just, I'm embarrassed for him. And I just, it, I, it, it angers me so much. I don't know how you guys do As it. As an American, I cannot watch him on TV. I bet. So if you want to know if narcissists lie, the person that asked that question or anybody else, and someone else asked a question that was very similar, but I can't find it right now um, about lying. I'll bring it up in another one. Uh, but do narcissists always lie? Their whole entire life personality is a lie 
And everything about them is one huge lie. And why is that? Okay, every, people have talked about the mask slipping. That mask is them portraying whatever it is that they want to portray, whatever it is that they think they need to portray to get you, whatever they need to portray for people to like them or to get ahead or to whatever and to play normal, I guess, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all fake and phony. So if you talk about somebody wearing a mask, why are they wearing a mask? They're wearing a mask to hide who they really are. Mm -hmm. Right. But what is the definition of a personality disorder is it is a distortion of the person's internal mechanisms of what they see themselves as, as, as well as the, the world around them. Narcissism is built on shame. And so they create a false sense of self an identity. And these masks will chameleonize. They will change to whoever they're trying to manipulate and whoever they're trying to bring into their world. But they're, the general consensus or conceptualization, conceptualization of themselves is a complete lie because it's not who they really are. They are flawed and they, are, they know that they're flawed. So they've created a false identity because they can't cope with who they actually really are. And they don't even know that they're lying anymore, to be mm -hmm. honest. No, they, they believe their own bullshit. Yeah, it has, they lie so much that in every lie, there is a kernel of truth. But when you're talking to a, an, an MPD narcissist, they may say something that they honestly believe because they have lied about it so much. Exactly. It's become reality to it them. It's reality to them. It's frightening. I have a client from Florida, actually, and his dad is this guy who literally makes up stuff to make himself sound better. A narcissist will lie about their education. They will lie about their job. They will lie about things that they've done to make them sound exciting and to make them sound like they've done all these things so that they're important to the eye in the eyes of the people around them. And this guy, literally my client said that his dad pulled out a picture of him as a kid saying it was him that he was, you know, he was in the military and he fought in world war II. And it was pretty funny because it was actually my client, which is his son. And it was a picture of him when he went to boot camp. Excuse my dog. Sorry. Um, right. And he's like, dad, that's not you. That's me. He's like, no, it's not it's me. I went to, I like, like the shit that they, 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 and they, they actually believe it. They've lied. So like Jody said, they were out their entire life about something that didn't even happen or isn't true or it's fabricated beyond belief to make themselves boost their ego, to boost themselves up so that they feel important in the eyes of other people because they don't really actually feel that way. They think they're... They're super self-loathing, yep. super self-loathing. And they, and I've mentioned this many times before, so briefly is they don't, they don't go after people who are weak. They go after people who can do something for them, whether yeah. it is to elevate them stature of financial, personal well, or um, personal looks, uh, professional, anything that because if these people up here are hanging with me, then mm -hmm. I am up here too. Mm -hmm. I belong here, not here. Mm -hmm. So they use it to elevate because they know they don't belong. Mm -hmm. And they know they're hiding, but this gives them a sense of, I do belong because see, mm -hmm. see, I'm surrounded by all of these people. Important people. You this brought up, wonderful. you brought up that they will lie about their education. Yeah. I have to say, when I first met my ex, my ex was the number one in seniority at our institution, at our prison. And he taught our block training, which is in-service training. And because he did that, he taught all the new employee orientation. So if new employee orientation was 15 different blocks of classes we had to take, he taught about 10 of them. Mm -hmm. So people knew who he was. Everybody had to go through and, and the classes that he taught. So when it was my turn, I remember I was sitting there and he said that he went I am a Bruin. I am a UCLA Bruin. One of these up there is UCLA. I bleed blue and gold. And so he was sitting there telling his little who he was. And he said he has a master's degree. He went to UCLA. It's like, oh, he 
went to UCLA. So that kind of piqued my interest. <laughs> and when we started dating, no one had asked him. No one had asked him. I said to him, oh, so you got your master's at UCLA when? Tell me about it. And he goes, well, I actually never got my master's because when I was going to start my master's, I was getting a divorce. So that kind of just ended everything. I didn't have the time and the energy and the money and all that at that time. And I said, so wait, so wait, so wait, you didn't go to UCLA and you don't have a master's. You applied apparently, maybe don't even know if you applied, but you say you went to UCLA. So did you like walk onto the campus one day? Because technically that's not a lie. You did go to UCLA, but you never got your master's from UCLA. So they also twist it mm -hmm. so that it, I never exactly said right. that I graduated with a master's. I said, I went to UCLA for my master's. Yeah. See, that's again, they're, they're, they're literally twisting and now they're backpedaling, right? There's the gaslighting piece coming in because now they're trying to distort and twist the reality of what they actually said. And, and you so, took it wrong. I mean, yeah. you like, you well, it's not my fault. You took it that way. That's not what I said. Well, actually that's exactly what you said. And that's the only way most people would interpret it. So you have a very distorted version or interpretation of how people would interpret. This is what narcissists do. So now that's one, now that we've conceptualized what a narcissist is and that they're based on their whole identity is a lie and who they are is a lie. And they make up all this shit about themselves so that they feel important in the eyes of all those around them because they're actually very insecure and feel insignificant and narcissists can't feel insignificant. That's their biggest wound. So they have to feel important. That's why they have to pump themselves up. So you'll find that they lie about all sorts of shit from who they've dated, their social circle, their status, they're all, all these things, right? But what's another reason why a narcissist will lie? And can they be pathological liars? Well, yeah, they are pathological liars. Another reason that they lie? What do you mean? Yeah. Well, another, okay, so lot. they okay. are a lie, but what, and, and they can lie about like who they are and what they are and their credentials and all these different things. But what's another reason? Like, what are other examples of lying from a narcissist? Like what? cheating infidelity they will fucking oh, lie they yeah. will lie their faces off until the cows come home these people are the guys that literally get caught with their hand in the cookie jar and still say it wasn't me that song from that song wasn't Ooh, me. i can't even listen to it. it makes me want to throw up i literally am like i i fucking hate that song i it's so triggering because it's like literally caught me but banging she caught me on the counter on yeah. the counter wasn't, wasn't me, me on the bathroom floor wasn't me like but that's a narcissist it's literally i caught my ex fucking red-handed it's like several times over several different things and he still tried to gaslight lie and say, you didn't see what you saw you didn't see yeah. what you thought you saw mm -hmm. and then because i cannot explain it away i'm gonna do the darvo yeah Right. Or the Darvo when their hand is caught, like basically with a smoking gun and they know they can't get out of it anymore. Then it turns into, I didn't want to hurt you and all these excuses and all these reasons, but they still lie and twist and manipulate the truth. Right. My, my ex used to say, this is, a, this is when and how I would know he was lying. A lot of the times so he'd say, look into my eyes. Do I look like I'm lying? Oh, wow. And yeah. look in my eyes. Would I lie? Look in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know what I got? yeah, I got, uh, it's your problem. If you don't want to believe me, he's like, I know I've done everything in my power and I've actually been totally upfront and honest. And I can leave this relationship knowing I, I was a stand up person and did the honest, the, like the, the, whatever lying right through his fucking teeth the whole time about the infidelity and about like for three years, any time that I felt insecure and would bring something up, he would gaslight me so severely that it was like, at least I know I, I, I was the best version of myself and I blah, 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 And shit. they will, because they know they're lying, they will proactively, like my ex got, <laughs> because they're juggling other people, I, I, I'm gonna because I don't like to use absolutes. I won't say 10 out of 10 times, but I'm going to think it nine out of 10 times they're cheating. Mm -hmm. 
one way or another, they're cheating. I, I want to say 10 out of 10, but I, I'm, I'm not going to use absolutes. I'll say nine out of 10. My ex apparently, and I'll, I'll tell you, I did my um, narc ex. I did an episode on him already, but I'll bring it up again. You can go back and watch that one. Um, but I'm going to tell you the biggest lie in a bit, but he sent me, he was working overtime one day and he sent me a screenshot of the clock where he was working. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, I'm just showing you that I am really here. Like I said, I was, and I mm -hmm. sent back, why would I, you told me you were working overtime. Why would I have any doubts of you working overtime? And they're so fucking stupid. One, he did not mean to send that to me. Nope. He meant to send that to his other supply. And mm -hmm. two, guess what, dude? I'm now suspicious. Yeah, they tell on themselves. That's how ridiculously fucking out to lunch they are. They literally <laughs> do. The projecting. Oh, like jealousy and, and control and all the rest of it is all because it's projection because of all of the, usually the infidelity. Again, the why do narcissists cheat or why do they be like, I mean, people cheat, okay? You don't have to be a narcissist to be unfaithful to a partner. But if you are a person who repeatedly does this without thinking or conscience or justifies your behavior, that's pathological. So again, you, and the, it, because they need supply, they need constant attention from everywhere, everywhere they go. And supply is anything. Remember, supply is anything. When you're at the grocery store and that cashier says, hey, how's your day? Do you find everything okay? In an NPD's mind, if it's a male to a female, female to a male, even better. But it doesn't have to be the opposite gender. However, if it is, it's like, oh my God, that's even better because in their mind, that mm -hmm. is an opening. That person wants me. Seriously, mm -hmm. that is supply. The biggest, one of the biggest lies about my ex that he would, about himself, he was an actor and he was like, I don't do it for the attention. I do it because I'm an artist. <laughs> the thing is, you would have to say that if that were really If that were true, you would be, and he came across so humble in the beginning and he's like, oh no, but I, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't care about that. I'm like, no, the reason why you are an actor is so you can be the center of attention because you need the validation. You need the attention. We'd be out in public and he'd literally be walking down the street and be like, oh, that chick's totally eye fucking. Oh, <laughs> and I'm walking with him and I'm like, wow. And first and foremost, probably not because they're delusional and secondly shush why the f would you tell me that right like there's no like why would you tell me that oh because oh. you're trying to knock me down trying to make and me also scared. because i want you to know that yeah i'm so honest are attracted to me. me i know there are two things one is you are lucky to be with me is implied yep. because everybody wants me and yep. you 100 percent and the, the second thing is just to point out that I'm great because mm -hmm. look, look, yeah. look. Yeah. Look. And he wanted me to know and wanted me to see it. I'm like, you know, I used to tell my boyfriend when I was like 17, oh, this guy hit on me today, but I was 17. I was immature and it was perfect. I did it because I'm like, well, if he's jealous, that means he cares. Cause I'm immature emotionally and mentally. And that's just what teenagers do. But at 40 something years old, if you're a secure person to some extent, you don't need to tell the person you're with that you're getting attention elsewhere. No, unless it bothers you and you want them to say something to the person because that well, person. Yeah. But I mean, I go. can handle myself but, out of my own. I don't need to go back yeah. and be like, Oh, this guy hit on me. I look like an insecure loser, but it's like, Okay, great. So that person likes you. In other words, stay in line and or step in line if you're not, because I can replace you really easily. Mm -hmm. It's also a control Absolutely. tactic. It is a control tactic. It's to scare you. It's to scare you yeah. into submission to behave or to give them what they want so that they won't, because then once you know all these women want them or all these men want them, then you're going to do what they want you to do. To keep them. Yep. And th this is what's really sad. And I wish, but they're so good. 
They're horrible, but they're so good. When you figure them out, they're horrible. It's just the figuring them out. What they do is, and when we're talking about it right now, I can look back and, oh my God, see all of these things. That while I'm in the relationship, again, we talked about this last week, the context is different. You're not expecting Mm -hmm. this lie and all of that. Because people will say, if they lied to you, then why didn't you leave right when they lied the first time? Well, we all are born, I think, inherently good unless you're a psychopath there's more research coming and that's out. a yeah that's a brain that's, issue that that's it yeah, it's a brain issue but literally we're supposed to be all born inherently innocent and good and it's the job of our parents to do what we call marked mirroring right they mirror back what we feel as infants that's how we learn how to be emotionally appropriate to the emotion or the feeling that we have and respond the appropriate way if we had solid secure attachment growing up but if you've got, again, narcissism, there isn't that. That's why, is he okay? Pippa? Get your attention. Sorry, <laughs> she's choking. She's fine now. You're okay. You're yeah, good. it was, um, I need your fine. attention. I'm going to choke. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to choke. choke. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. A puppy. It's hard. She's 15 <laughs> weeks. I took her out earlier today, but she needs another bit of a walk coming up here soon. But anyways, um, oh my God, I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? Squirrel. squirrel 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 <laughs> this is the fun thing about us is that you just never know what you're gonna get this is not scripted obviously no, we're just kind of you know raw authentic we're we're bouncing no, things off um oh right they're oh. trying to keep you control you and how in the, in the relationship, yes. it's different than looking back on the relationship. We can look at the lies right now yeah. and it's so easy to figure out in yeah. the relationship, not so much. So people that say, why didn't you leave after the first lie or yeah. the second lie? And that's where you started to explain something. Yeah. So, um, and why didn't you leave? But in the last video, we talked about we're born inherently good or we're supposed to be in this marked mirroring and then the narcissist doesn't get that. And then they're, they're basically broken, right? The true self died long ago. It's so fragile because they've been traumatized or overindulged. I mean, there's multiple reasons as to where narcissism comes. Their from. perception <laughs> is that they have been, they have been neglected. A lot. neglected. Yeah. Now, whether they actually have or not, it doesn't matter because that is their perception. So to them, it was yeah. very real. It depends though. If I look at my, my recent, shush, sorry guys. I'm so sorry. Um, my recent relationship that ended, um, he would blame his mom and his dad, dad abandoned him. Mom was abusive. Mom was controlling. Mom was whatever. But my ex-husband on the other hand, thinks his parents were fine. And yet they were so not fine and they were so fucked. And his mom is like a major avoidant. His dad's a major avoidant. Like he had massive avoidant attachment. Whereas my recent ex was far more ambivalent, right? He was far more anxious than he was avoidant and was all about blaming his, his, uh, his parents for his, his bad behavior. Right. Cause that's another thing that they do now that they're learning more about that. It comes from trauma or it can come from trauma. They like to play the victim. So, but we are born inherently good. So we don't see these things and you want to believe somebody when they, they at face value for telling you what they're telling you. You don't want to just assume everybody's lying. I mean, when we meet people and we build relationships with people, we take what they're saying to be true. Not that, Hmm, is this person lying to me? No. So, I mean, when you go into these relationships, that's just sort of what we do. You don't think the person's lying unless it really is obvious that it, it isn't adding up and you're, you're seeing the discrepancies and the inconsistencies right away. You don't normally see that right away though, unless they're really stupid. Yeah. And, and you can be a pathological liar and not be MPD. I had a, we had a coworker one time many years ago who was a pathological liar. She was not MPD but she was a pathological liar to the point of her saying that she was engaged to a guy in Arizona. She'd have my sister drive her to Arizona to the airport to fly to Arizona for the weekend. Then my sister would pick her up. She was never going to Arizona. She said she got engaged. She bought herself a ring. She bought herself flowers to be sent to the office. She was not MPD. There were other issues going on. So you can okay, what? So what's it? Sorry. Sorry, Jody. What's the difference between pathological lying and compulsive lying? There is a difference. I think path a lot. I think compulsive lying. 
do compulsive liars just like have to lie and pathological is they don't even realize they're lying anymore? They're lying. The patholo I think the difference is pathological is um, they, they're, they're lying for no reason. Mm. They don't need to lie. Okay. Compulsive lying is when you are fucking up all the time and you're hiding and you, you Oh, have, okay. Okay. Lie. So but she path was pathological. Lying. Pathological is like, you're lying for absolutely no reason. That's like, you know, um, What's the movie girl interrupted where her roommate is a pathological liar. It's like she just made stuff, a fictitious stuff up all the time just for the sake of making it up and lying. There's no reason to lie. Like when we think about innately, why we all lie, we, everybody lies. We all did as kids, everybody Not as get kids, into trouble. Usually. Right. It's part of the human condition. Now, why did I lie as a kid? I was terrified of getting in trouble because my mom was super abusive. So if I even did something that most kids do, I never did anything that was horrible, but I made a mistake or I spilled something or whatever. It was like automatic. It just came out as a lie because I was terrified of getting in trouble. Right. And you know, I grew out of that. I don't lie now, but I will say in my last relationship, I hid from people. I didn't tell them what was going on in my relationship because I was so embarrassed, but people didn't outright ask me. And I never put myself in positions of having to, but it's sort of, again, that fear of being judged or getting in trouble. Right. And remember a lie by omission. Yes. is still a lie because that's another that's thing that MPD will do a lot. <laughs> is lie by omission. I will tell you two things. I'm not going to tell you the third. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That my ex did that all the time. And he's like, Oh, well, you know, you didn't ask, or it wasn't this sort of, it's like, if you're hiding things from me that you know that I need to know, or I should know, then you were lying, right? You were li like, you were lying a hundred percent. You were lying. And it's like, well, you didn't ask me that. But the thing is, if you do ask them that they are going to have a fucking fit they're going to lie. They're going to gaslight. They're going to mind fuck. They're going to get so upset if you did ask that. Mm -hmm. So they know that you didn't, that you meant it. Obviously, if you say, what did you do today? Where did you go? And they tell you, and, and you know <laughs> that they were with somebody else, but you didn't specifically ask if they were alone or with someone else. Mm -hmm. They'll not, they won't tell you. And then it's your fault because you didn't ask. But if you would have asked, were you alone? Oh my God, all hell would have broke loose. Mm -hmm. And Why then you the fuck are you asking me that? Oh, and then the Darvo goes and on and on. I mean, here's the thing. Usually if somebody gets uber defensive, when you're asking a question, they're hiding something. Not always. Even... I mean, it really depends. Like a lot of people say you can tell when somebody's lying because they get super defensive. My ex got to the point where he he just didn't react. He was still lying, but he thought that if he didn't get angry and mad, he didn't look as guilty. And so he was able to cover it up better. That's and I will say, if I've been accused, though. right. And if I've been accused of doing something that I didn't do, I can, I, I, I got pissed off. I was like, I didn't, what, why are you accusing me of this? Like, this is ridiculous. I'd get defensive, but I didn't do anything. I don't like being accused of things I didn't do. So depending on the reaction, it just, it's not always as black and white as sometimes they make it out to be, right? But if, if, if a narcissist is accusing you of doing, like being unfaithful or they're jealous or they think that you're talking to somebody or they're just projecting what they're doing onto you. That's the first sign that they're telling on themselves. Yeah. Oh, they project big time. My no. ex though, the lies that my ex told were such that because I had not encountered someone like that, I never would have thought of them initially as lies. Like my ex lied using family members. Um, okay. For example, cause I'm going to save the good one, but for example, my ex was already seeing his new supply. And it was Valentine's Day. And he had told me we had made all of these plans for the week because my son was going to be gone. Like my son is never gone. He was going to be gone during Valentine's Day. He was on a, a YMCA trip up to Sacramento. So I told my ex and we made plans. He was leaving Wednesday or whatever. So we were going to get together Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, as the time got closer, he was like, my ex started being like, I don't understand why you're making these plans for us. I never planned this. And I'm like, 
okay, first off, it was your idea that we do all this. Second off, where is this coming from? And he's like, well, I'm just saying I have to get my taxes done on Valentine's Day. So I'm not going to be able to get together. And I'm like, what about after Valentine's Day? He's like, I'm going to be so tired. You know, I know you think I'm going to be with this other person that I had found out he was with. He goes, I know you're going to, th you think I'm going to be with her. And I was just like, um, well, now I do. Now I do. That's exactly <laughs> what I said. I was like, now I do because you made these plans and now you're getting pissed at me. So on Valentine's day, we were texting up until like four o'clock and then he had his tax appointment. And then from four o'clock to like eight o'clock, nothing dead crickets. So I'm texting him. Hey, what happened with your tax appointment? I go to the same person. I know it takes maybe an hour if you're talking what's going on. And I get sent back a picture of his daughter on a gurney being looked at by a doctor at the hospital. And he says, my daughter's in the hospital. She had an asthma attack and you're sitting here blowing up my phone. How inconsiderate of you. And I'm like, okay, first off, I don't know <laughs> that you're going through anything, hmm. you know? So if you would have told me, I would have been empathetic, but you didn't say anything. And then I zoomed in on the watch of the doctor because he they show it was his arm. And I zoomed in and I'm like, huh, his daughter's in another state, in another time zone. And there is no way by what time it is right now, this either happened this morning or it hasn't happened yet. Because it was like the watch said like 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, there is no way. But how do I now say, dude, your daughter's not in the hospital? That makes me look like a fucking bitch, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't tell a grieving dad who's so worried about his daughter that he's full of shit lying. Mm -hmm. Who who does that? Who puts family members sick mm -hmm. as a oh, lie yeah. to cheat? Yes. I 100% believe he was out with this woman. And when I saw that picture, I was like, great. But I can't say anything. That's yeah. another thing that narcissists will do. They will make the lie or whatever so that you're the fucking bitch, an uncaring, empathetic bitch, if you question it. Mm -hmm. Like, how dare I question his daughter having an asthma attack in the hospital and him being terrified? Well, they, they, because they can use that as ammo. Exactly. Because it, because then you look unempathetic and uncaring. Those are the lies that my ex used to talk, used to do all the time. He would use his family mm -hmm. to the point of, I will tell you, or should I wait and say it at the end to make people listen? <laughs> but he, he would always, we were in um, San Francisco once. On a big, on a trip, and he got a phone call, and he's talking to his son, who knows me. His son has stayed at my house. I have stayed at his his place. That's a whole different story. But I hear him say, "Yeah, your grandpa's really sick, and I'm here taking care of him." Mm -hmm. That should have been. I he hung up, and I'm like, "Why did you tell him that?" And he goes, "Because my dad is sick, and I just don't want him bugging me while we're on our vacation." Now, any normal person, okay, that's not a, that's a, not a good lie, dude. You're not taking care of your dad. You just lied, but okay. I get it. Your dad is sick. Your son knows, and you don't want him bothering us, but it still was like, I remember when I, he told me that and I was kind of like, I said to him, that's not, that's what I don't, Hmm. Explain to me why and then it was just like why am I not minding my own business this has nothing to do with me he told his son this they have this relationship blah 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 but it was like I don't even think his dad was sick at the time so it's not just to to their supply they'll tell their kids they'll tell their boss they'll lie to anybody and everybody well, they're distorting their reality shift. It's shifting all the time. It's always moving to suit them, just to suit their needs. So they do start believing their own bullshit. They actually pathologically believe themselves. 
like they believe they change their story and they believe their story. It's, it's crazy. They know it's a lie in the beginning, but then they change the story and they believe the story. When they gaslight you, they do this all, all the time. Like my you want to do something pathetic was when I ended the relationship, I busted my ex for literally saying it to most people would be a harmless comment as, oh, is the mom cute to his daughters? And I've said this before. And when I was like, is the mom cute? He literally on the spot, LOL, I knew you were listening. Um, so I thought I'd throw that in there for you. And I'm like, there's the lie. No, that's, you just got busted. No, he's like, you're being a creep and you're listening to me. So there's another lie. <laughs> and now you're going to play victim and I'm the bad guy. So this is how Darvo works, right? Like it's a prime example of Darvo is it's deny, lie, deny completely. And then victim reverse center. <laughs> like it's, it was so classic, but then it was just like, and then it was like, okay, it was tasteless. It was a joke. So which is it? I'm a creep for listening in on the conversation because I didn't hang up the phone or you knew I was listening. So you thought you'd throw that in there to teach me a lesson or it's a joke. You see how the lies keep happening, like literally, and then they get caught and they don't even remember what they're lying about. And so they get pissed off. The and then they just get fucking just... mad and they're like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. done with you. And you're like, uh-huh. Of course, right. because you have no way to get out. Or they'll keep trying. My <laughs> and they stick to it. They literally stick to it when you're begging them to tell you the truth. I'm like, just admit it. You got caught. Yes, you got caught. Why would you lie? Like you can't, like how, but they 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 start to believe it. Well, you believe what you want, but that's the truth. And the mm -hmm. thing is, it's like, just tell me the truth. I'm not gonna get mad if you tell me the truth. I might be disappointed. I might not like it, but tell me the truth. And they'll be, I am telling you the truth. Yeah. It's, and it's such a crock of shit because honestly, but he knew that it was going to be a problem. He knew he got busted and we didn't try. He, I didn't trust him anyway. And he was already, he's just such a fucking, I knew I couldn't, I couldn't trust him. And it just made it that much worse that he lied about it. Had he just says, yeah, you caught me saying a shitty thing. So what I said, the mom's cute. And I'm like, well, you've disrespected me so much in this relationship that hurt my feelings. Like that hurt. I didn't like hearing that. But had you told the truth that I've got something to base that I can start to trust you, but no, if they can't even fucking tell the truth when they get caught and they have to manipulate gaslight and twist it. The only time I got the truth out of my ex was because I totally blindsided him. Mm -hmm. He was not expecting me and he answered the question so innocently. And then when he realized it, he totally backpedaled. And I said to him, dude, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Was frightening. My ex, um, and I, this is, this is my ex used his dad to mm -hmm. lie and, a lot. And I don't even know to this day what the truth is, but my ex went on. I had, okay. I had heard it's a long story. Go back and watch the video. Cause I can't give you everything here, but I had started dating my ex in 2009 mm -hmm. and then I found out in 2012 no 2011 that he got married mm -hmm. and so I had found this out and I had confronted him and he said I am not married I don't know what you're getting at and the person that he got married to was literally psycho. I mean, she was, if she would have come up to me and said, hey, get the fuck away from him or anything. But what she did was she would scream shit at me in my, our parking lot, our work parking lot. Like, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, she was, she was psycho. She would slam, we have security gates and she would slam them in my face. She would wait till I got there and slam them in my face. And it was like, fuck. My colleagues would say, there's some blonde chick out there, like, like watching everything you do on the yard. What the hell is wrong with her? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Well, it turned out that he married her. 
but he told me he did not. He was not married and she is psycho. She is crazy. And she was, and she acted that way toward me. She used to work. She didn't work on the yard that I worked on. So she got transferred to that yard. And when I would be working, we had classrooms with big open wind or big windows that you could see out of. She would walk back and forth and just all day long when I was in there, walk back and forth that people started to say to me, who is that? I'm like, but you got to remember what she's being fed by him. Like I didn't know say, though. No, That's I know funny. we can say that she's psycho, but she probably was just being so fucking gaslit right. and manipulated. And now I know that, crazy. But, at, but at that oh, time, I'm just like, what the hell? She mm -hmm. used to like be, she would stand out in front of my building and just watch everything I did. And it was like, what the hell? Again, when my colleagues are saying, who the fuck is that? She's she's following you. I'm like, she's psycho. And I said to my ex, what the hell is going on? He goes, we are not together. She, We've been friends for 20 years. I've known her. And I'm like, well, let's meet. Why don't we meet and kind of end this whatever the fuck is going on with her? I had no problem with it. And my ex would say, no, she doesn't want to. Well, yeah, because he was lying to her and he was lying to me. But the way that he, this played out was my ex told me that his dad had died. He had said um, he was going up to Sacramento because his dad died and he was just devastated. It was horrible. And I said, I'll go up there with you. And he was like, no, no, private I have family thing. And I had never met his parents, but he had been on the phone at my house talking to them a lot. So, uh, but he would always speak in Spanish and I know Spanish. I understand Spanish. I do not speak Spanish, but I understand it. And so I thought, okay, he goes, it's a private family thing. I really don't think it's okay. You know, I just, I just want to be with my family. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to respect that. Your dad died. That is fine. No, he went on a cruise to Mexico with his, or Caribbean with his wife that he got married to. Wow. And I didn't say anything. I again, watch the video, but two years later, he texts me on our way to a vacation. I was packing and he sent me a text saying, Hey, remember when I told you my dad died? I'm like, Oh, you mean when you went to Cancun or whatever? Mm -hmm. And he totally ignored that. And he goes, well, he didn't die. And I said, why are you texting me now? And he goes, cause it wasn't him. It was my uncle. I was too embarrassed to tell you. I was like, wait a minute, did they, were they identical twins and you just got the dental records back? How, you waited two years to tell me that that wasn't your dad that really died. I said, so why are you telling me this now? And he said, well, because my dad died this morning. <laughs> like, really? Interesting, because you told me your dad died so you can go on a cruise so that you were unreachable. I couldn't call him if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Now we are ironically going on a cruise. And I didn't know this till after he was with his new supply. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to get out of going on the cruise where knowing that I was on the cruise, I couldn't call him. Mm -hmm. He was trying to be with his new supply, but he said, I don't, I don't want to go to the funeral. I don't, I don't want to go. And I said, then don't, he goes, I'm just going to go on vacation. I said, then go on vacation. He goes, my dad was horrible. He abandoned us. He abused me, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, if all of that is true, then it explains why you are the way you are. I said, but you don't have to go to the funeral if you had that relationship with him. And every day up until the day of the cruise, he wavered back and forth. Mm -hmm. We went on the cruise. We went on our two-week vacation. But as soon as he got home, he left my house and went off to his new supply so I wonder what he told her and to this day I honest to God don't know if his dad is alive or dead yeah he told me his mom was really really sick and had to go to Mexico for a surgery so he would be out of communication and this was before you know I I 
who uses their mom really, really sick? Who uses their dad dying? Oh, no, I met a girl that we found out about six months ago, not, no, not even three months ago, that she did the same thing. And we found her mom very well and alive on Facebook. And we're like, so you manipulated everyone around you to gain yeah. their sympathy and their condolences and their empathy and all of their mm -hmm. whatever. Who, the, who like but she goes beyond narcissism she's a psychopath yeah, like there's really, something she's a con artist. like she she just steals money from people so they play they have no conscience they play on people and so they will use things like their parent dying and then yeah. playing on everybody's in in like, a real not, world situation you're like who would who would do that so you don't automatically take that as a bullshit and no, they use that it. one Mm -hmm. they use that they can, the crocodile the crocodile tears can come right like these guys are master master manipulators but number one fucking oscar winning how actor. can you and then if you god forbid tell me my dad didn't die i'm well, fucking grieving i know well what that's how insensitive crazy. bitch you are i don't need to be with you so mm -hmm. you're damned if you do and damned if you don't you know, I remember him calling me and he said, my mom is, we have to go to um, Mexico because she needs to have a surgery. So I'm going to be, I probably not going to be calling you. And I said, oh, wow. Okay. But then he called me again. He goes, I'm at the hospital right now with the, their, their lies are elaborate. I'm at the hospital with the doctor right now. We're talking about all the different options that there are and I'm like okay well I hope everything works out I really do because mm -hmm. I mean why would I think he's lying I wouldn't lie about my parents like that I well, didn't nobody know that, at the time. that would do that and then he said later on he goes I bet you think I'm going on a cruise well yeah <laughs> and I'm like I did it <laughs> but now I do and guess what he crazy. was going on a cruise and I caught him and sent all his shit back and all of that. But it was like, they tell on themselves. Like he said, I bet you think I'm going on a cruise. I'm like, that came out of left field. You're telling me your mom's sick and going to Mexico. Why would I think you're going on a cruise? Mm -hmm. Why? Is my mind? Uh, what are some other lies that narcissists will tell? Um, they lie about their status. Mm -hmm. So they will tell you that they are higher yeah. ranking in than what they are. Yeah. Yeah. We, we covered that one in the beginning. What else did they lie about? They lie about their financial stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. That they always have money and they don't. And one of the things they do any money to use yours. My ex was always, he's like, I got to, I've got to spend this money on my kids. My ex made good money. He made really good money. But he's like, oh my God, I just bought my son four tires. It was this amount of money. His sons were in their 20s at the time. One is in their 30s now. He's like, oh, I have to pay for this. I have to pay for that. I'm like, why are you doing that? I said, does that make you, do you feel like you're a good brother, son, uh, uh, father, uncle by spending money on everybody? And he's like, yeah how else what else would I do it's like yeah. spending money is does not make you a good dad no but in his mind he spent money on his nieces and nephews so that he could be the good uncle he spent money on his kids so he could be the good dad he was spending money for his sending money to his parents so that he could be the good son mm. now did he do anything no in his mind, sending the money and spending the money, he literally said to me, but if I don't buy his tires, he's going to hate me. Yep. Wow. Why would your son hate you for not buying him tires? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But that's, again, what narcissists do to keep you in their, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, love me, love me, love me. Or the the grandiosity of their, their just entitlement, like let's use social media, for example, now that we have social media 
And so many people, especially because narcissists will use this as supply, right? They'll use social media as supply. So I will say again, they will all of the attention, if we're looking at a heterosexual man or woman for that matter, it doesn't even matter. The liking of all the photos of all of the super, like the fucking Instagram models and, and all of these, and adding all these attractive people and whatever. And then you call them out on it because that's what we call micro cheating. Cause it's just not appropriate when you're in a relationship what quicker way to make the person you're with feel insignificant and unseen and unloved and uncared for is when you're liking the pictures of fucking all these bikini models all over the place. Like, oh, it's no different than a magazine. I beg to differ. You know what? A magazine, you can't let that person know that you're liking their photo. It's very different, but the things that they will come up with or things like, I need it for my following because I'm an actor and it's all about publicity and marketing. Like literally the lies, lie, 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 lie. They just spew, just shit comes out of their mouth. It's just pure shit all the time. Yeah, every single. And they will continue to lie as to why they're doing it and make excuses and justify their shitty behavior. But yeah. What are so some other lies have you been told? Um. I'm trying to think of other lies. Like I'm these lies, the lies can be so obscenely pathetic. Like you're laughing. Like again, think Donald Trump. Some of the shit that comes out of that guy's that comes out of that guy's mouth on live television, nonetheless. Like, like you're like, and his like arrogance, like, I am the best. I am going to like, no. And it's not true. Like he's blatantly fucking lying. And the whole world knows he's lying, but he believes his own lies. And it's embarrassing to listen to him. I'm trying to, you think. know, it's funny with the whole, I am the best. I have to tell this little story because I think it's funny. My ex again, number one in seniority. So because he was number one and he taught our in-service training, he felt because again, they're so self-loathing that they have to do anything and everything to feel more powerful and to feel better. So he felt far superior and he used to talk shit about rookies, about anybody that made even the slightest mistake. He mm -hmm. would bad mouth them over and over again. Mm -hmm. And one day he got assaulted. Turned out to be my inmate that assaulted him, which I had no idea. It wasn't anything connected to me at all. But it was just like, I guess, poetic justice, maybe. I don't know, because we were already split up at that point. <laughs> it had to be my inmate that assaulted him. But my ex used to always complain about rookies and people who didn't have enough years in the department and how, oh my God, they don't know how to handle inmates. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to use the pepper spray. Well, my ex, for some reason, ended up pepper spraying instead of the inmate, he pepper sprayed his partners. Now pepper spray, pe pepper spray comes out orange. So I call it Oompa Loompa. He Oompa loompa his partners. He drenched them in pepper spray, which is not a good thing. No, it's pepper not. It spray hurts. Yeah, it hurts. So oh. it was like, that is a fucking rookie move. Big time rookie move. So we were separated at the time. But I did talk to him because when I heard he was assaulted, I did get a little concerned and I asked someone and they're like, oh my God, I, I talked to my inmate who said what happened. I was like, I can't deal with this inmate because now it's a conflict of interest. And it's, there's a lot of trans, um, transference, counter transference, where I can't talk to him without thinking about you motherfucker. What did you do? Blah, blah, blah. I can't be ethical. So mm -hmm. I talked, called my supervisor. I said, please, someone else talk to him because of course they go suicidal when uh, they're going to be in trouble. So he had gone suicidal, but my ex ended up being like laughed at, laughed at because you're number one in seniority and you just oompa loompa your partner mm -hmm. while an inmate was kicking your ass, mm -hmm. like literally beating the ass shit out of you. There's so an action not meeting words. <laughs> <laughs> so when I finally talked to him, I did talk to him and I said, dude, what happened? 
And he's like, oh, my hand slipped because it was wet from the pepper spray and blah, blah. And I'm like, wait a minute, though. Aren't you the same guy who belittles and demeans and badmouths anybody else who just in the slightest fucks up? And you did this. And he's like, but, 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 of course, they have all the excuses in the world. It was this and it was that and it was that nothing can make them look anything less than. Oh, yeah, 100%. Anything less than. There's always a reason. They're either the victim or the hero. Mm -hmm. And in this case, he was the victim because there was something defective about Mm -hmm. that particular pepper spray. Of course, everything is somebody else's fault or something's fault, but not theirs. And it's like, dude, just tell the truth. Mm -hmm. You fucked up. Mm -hmm. They can't. Even that, those are lies as well. People may not consider that a lie when you're making a lie. When you're deflecting and you're not telling the truth and you're denying what actually happened and you're distorting it, that's a lie. So it was interesting listening to Dr. Romani because a lot of you will know who she's a a psychologist that specializes in narcissism. Um, It's Romani Diversala. And she just came out with a new book. It wasn't, it's not you. And it's going viral. It's it's actually really good. I listened to it last week. Um, she says, gaslighting isn't lying. And it, it was interesting how she she was, who was she talking to about that? I think it was Jada Pinkett, actually. She was in interviewing or an interview with her. Um, and she said that lying is like you get caught and the picture and that's you and you've been busted. And the person brings it to your attention and, you know, the person's like, and they lie and they say uh, no, or they do something to completely somebody who's gaslighting you. I think I got this right. Hang on a sec. Somebody that's gaslighting you is going to be like, oh my God, like you're so fucking insecure. They completely deflect away, but they're not, and it is still lying. But it's not like an uh, it's not an overt lie. It's not like an outright. Um, again, somebody catches you. You catch somebody cheating because you've got a picture of them with the other woman, or you know he, she's with somebody that she's not supposed to be with, and then they they try to lie about it, and they're like ah but 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 this was this night and we went here and it's not what you think it is and whatever. Still sort of gaslighting in a way, but they're lying. Where gaslighting is like. They've been busted. You caught them red handed and they're going, oh, you're so fucking insecure. I'm like, that's all in your head. So, so what would you call, okay, uh, Trump says he doesn't even know Jeffrey Epst- Epstein. Yeah. Doesn't even know him. But yeah, there's all these pictures and interviews where he says he's a great guy and there's pictures of him at parties. Is that gaslighting or is that lying? I think that's, it's both. That's well, that's lying. I mean, gaslighting, gaslighting, I think when you try to distort the reality, lying is just flat out, no. Yes, no. But gaslighting is also trying to make you believe. A lie. Yeah. So I know. lying as well. It is. It, it's, it, it's interesting. But the way that she talks about it, she says it's not lying. It's manipulating the scenario. But I, it was interesting how she phrased it. Damn it. I wish I could, sorry, folks. I wish I could remember exactly what she was saying in the example that she was using. Yeah. Because to me, gaslighting is you're lying as well. If I'm trying to manipulate the truth, isn't manipulating the truth lying? Well, manipulating, distorting the truth would be a form of lying. It's just yeah. not, I guess it's just not overt lying. Like again, there's different types of lying. You've got lying. Um, as a pathological liar, there's making some, something up for the sake of making it up. And it's not true. There's lying that you did something and you don't want the person to find out and you deliberately tell a lie and say, nope, when they ask you or you, and then there's secrecy where you're not divulging information that you're supposed to divulge, which is also a form of dishonesty and betrayal and lying. So let me tell you something. I want to see, I'm going to look up the definition of lying. Hold that thought. I just want to check on my dog. Make sure she's okay. A de- okay. Let's see. Adjective: telling or containing lies, deliberately untruthful, deceitful, false. Um, 
or to create a false or misleading impression. Mm -hmm. So that's it. What's it? Let's see. Gaslighting versus lying. Maybe it'll be there. Yeah. Good call. I'm just trying to remember the way that she defined it and it made sense. And I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Lying is just giving you bad information about things you don't already know. Gaslighting is an attempt to change your perception and your memory of things that you do already know. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. But still, you have to lie in gaslighting. Well, yeah, because you're but lying, you're distorting the truth. So you're telling, yeah. you're twisting the version of reality, which is lying because that's not the truth. So I'm trying to change your perception. Like you didn't see that. Read, read that again. Read what lying, lying is, is just giving you bad information about things you don't already know. Gaslighting no, is that, an attempt a, to change your terrible. That's a terrible explanation, or that's a terrible description of lying. Just yeah. bad information. It's wrong information. Lying is the complete opposite of what the truth is. Yeah, gaslighting is a specific kind of lying. Lying, excuse me, kind of lying. Gaslighting is telling someone that what they know or remember or have seen with their own eyes is not true. In an it's an effort to create a different history, an alternate reality for that person. So lying is a for gaslighting is a form of lying. Mm -hmm. It's just it's covert. And I mean, if you look at the movie Gaslight that had Ingram Bertrand, um, uh, who are the actors? I forget. Ingrid Bertrand, Bertrand. Blah, 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 blah. yeah, thank you, Bergman. Um, or yeah, isn't that who it is, Ingrid? Because there were two separate gaslighting movies, actually. Yeah, the first one was where again he turns down the gas lamps. Yeah, in the house to purposely. Ingrid Bergman, Charles Boyer, yes. Joseph Cotton. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I watched it with my mom actually. Not Angela Lansbury. Yeah, yeah, Angela Lansbury. She was super young in that movie. It was crazy. Um. But you're actually, he's purposely like taking things out of her purse. And she's like, I know I had it in there. And he's like, you must be losing your mind. Like he's purposely trying to drive her insane. Crazy, to yeah. Think that she's going crazy to, with an alt, uh, like, I, I can't remember what the purpose was, like for him to take money or to, to gain the house or to do something. But he was turning he upstairs out. doing something. And every time he did it, the gaslights he... would go, well, he was turning them down. And then she was like, what's going on? And then she's like, did you, did the lights just go dim? And he's like, no, you're losing your mind. Yeah. Like he literally was purposely doing things. And then again, lying, that's lying. And he's being dishonest with her, like she's, but he's purpose with the intent to manipulate and to do harm. So it is, it's changing her reality. Whereas in the beginning, she was very certain, I know right from wrong. And at the end of gaslighting, she has no idea up from down, sideways to backwards to- That's like, what NPD does That's to what you. NPD does to you. It creates so much cognitive dissonance that you're second guessing yourself all the time, all the time. My and Sorry. That's okay. And if the abuse is bad enough, you'll have a person. And I have a really good friend who has been through years and years and years of narcissistic abuse um, ever since she was in her early twenties, even younger than that. And now she's 50 and she still will constantly second guess herself over everything, but maybe, but maybe, but we don't really know. And we don't really know. And I'm like, Oh my God, it's enough to be just like, stop. <laughs> like get to the point where you trust your own instinct and your gut again and stop second guessing every little thing like not just people and in, in relationships or intimate relationships or men it's like everything and doesn't even recognize abuse when you've been abused so badly you won't even recognize scenarios and situations you're in that are blatantly abusive to most people can recognize it they won't see it when you're questioning your own sanity when you're wondering, I thought I saw that. Maybe I didn't. Maybe they're right. I thought I heard that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're questioning your sanity, you might want to speak to someone, get a second opinion, because toxic relationships with an NPD, that's an oxy, that's a that's a redundant. Relationships with an NPD are toxic will make you question your sanity. 24 will 
you will be saying, okay, wait a minute though. Wait a minute. But why? And they are so good. They're horrible when you figure them out, but they're so good in the setting of fucking with your mind so much that you will ask yourself, well, why did, did I, what made me ask that question? What made me think that he was lying in the first place or she was lying in the first place? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I didn't see that. Maybe I, when you are questioning yourself almost all the time, that's the time you got to go get some help. Talk mm -hmm. to a professional, go to therapy because mm -hmm. they will literally make you question your fucking sanity. Mm -hmm. They will, but a therapist, if they're good, will get you to do the work to start trusting your own intuition. They're not going to give you the answers for you. Oh God, no. Right. Like they're not going to sit there like, no, yes, yes, you're right. Yeah. No, you shouldn't think they're like, they're going to be asking you, what do you think? What do you feel? Do you and why? And why? why did you and get again, that? you have to get back to trusting your intuition. Having somebody constantly tell you what you should and shouldn't do isn't going to help you. That's dependency on all the people around you. You get to the point when you start healing that you won't need validation from anybody around you to the as to the decisions you make or the way that you think about something. It either works for you, it doesn't work for you, and you won't think you won't think twice to actually ask somebody's opinion or perspective as but to whether you're right they're good i know mine made me question he didn't make me anything sorry i questioned after our relationship i must be a really shitty psychologist mm. i fell for all of this shit i had a client who's a psychologist who yeah. just went made me doubt all of my clinical skills so just I because to go to therapy just because you're educated guys doesn't mean you can't be duped by these people especially because sorry they don't use lies like it's raining out when it's not they will use lies like my ex. My dad died. Well, so they will in the end. So fucking question me. Huh? Yeah, they're so fucking. Well, they will in the end when they're so fucking delusional. You could be arguing with them that the sky's fucking blue and they say it's purple just because they are going to say it's purple because they're just not going to agree with you. They also, they will lie though so that you don't have a response. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of times they will shut off your response. Like, for example, um, how dare you question me when you were out before? So why is it okay for you to be out, but not me? And how do you deal with a scenario like this? You don't allow them to deflect. You just say, we're not talking about that. We're, we're talking about this right now. We're talking yeah. about this right now. Keep the, keep the conversation at where it is because a narcissist will do everything in their power to deflect and go blame shift twist distort pull back go like then you did this but you did this but you... i have clients i'm working with right now that actually have major traits of mpd and i have two of them that are men and the, the way that they fight and you can tell it's all based it's shame based and they catch themselves and I had one client, I will use a really good example, is that he was going up to visit his kids and his wife who they were on spring break. And she asked him to get ice because the town that they were in, they needed it. They weren't close to a, a gas station or somewhere. So, and he brought it in and he forgot to bring it in. And so it melted. And she was like, I asked you to get ice because now we're going to have to whatever. And then instead of him saying, fuck, I'm sorry, I forgot. Instead, he went, but you fucking didn't, you left the garage door locked. So I couldn't bring it inside. But you came inside. But he came inside, but he, but, but right away he deflected instead yeah. of just saying, I fucked up yeah. because he can't feel the shame. It, it, it came down to that. And so being that as a therapist, you know, I can't, and he's actually getting help, which like people who are full on NPD won't usually do that. He knows he fights dirty. And he's like, why do I do this? And I'm like, that's a great question. These are defense mechanisms. Why did you, instead of just taking ownership, because I just went like this and he goes, yeah. Ugh. And you, then all of a sudden his eyes started to well up and I'm like, okay, we hit a cord. We hit a soft spot right there. What with my reaction triggered these, whatever. And he's like, I feel like a fucking failure. I said, there it is. There's the shame. There's the narcissistic shame. But that most made a mistake. He's not 
full on MPD because but he's not full. No, I'm and I'm not saying he is full on MPD. But these are strong narcissistic traits of the way that he battles and he fights because he does the Darbo. He does the full on deny, deflect, blame, shift, victim, reverse, whatever. He admitted in that moment, instead of just saying, I'm sorry, I left the ice and I forgot. He had said, but you left the fucking garage locked and I couldn't get in. It's your fault. And here's the thing with Darvo. Here's the Uh thing with Darvo. They, NPD does Darvo so well. Yeah. I don't even know they're doing it anymore. It's part of who they are. Yeah, that's my ex recently. Like he doesn't realize the way that he's fighting. And this guy didn't really either. It's because he's with his partner. He's like, you are gaslighting. You are denying your default. You're narcissistic. And I think that's made him question. But unlike my ex, he's like, so I'm a narcissist. What the fuck? Like, that's who I am. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, they like don't- my ex. So what? Don't expect so me to what? change. Yeah, exactly. They're not, that's true NPD. They, they will not change a person that can sit there and go, I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to hurt people. I don't, but they, in order to feel like they would have to have empathy. Mm-hmm. This is again, the difference between NPD and people who have highly narcissistic traits. My ex, when we went to therapy, we went one time because he wanted to go. And I said, any way to salvage a friendship, we'll go to therapy. First thing out of his mouth was a lie, his date of birth. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? But then the therapist said, were there any, are there any kids involved? My son, he knew, my ex knew, because he wanted this role, that he was the father figure for my son from the age of six to 16. Mm. I was with him for 13 years. So sorry. But yeah, mainly six to 16. And, um, he goes, no, no kids involved. And I looked at him and I go, are you kidding me? What about my son? And the therapist said, oh, were you just thinking of your own kids or kids that you guys had together? I mean, and he goes, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. We don't have any kids together. And I'm just like, you fucking <laughs> No, you knew exactly what he was asking. Because later he told my friends, a couple of my friends, that I demanded, and he told the therapist, she's demanding that I write an apology to her son and that I write an apology to all her friends for how I treated them. And I'm like, I never asked for any of that. Any of that. Where the fuck did you get that from? Mm -hmm. He told the clinician that I was... He's, she's, he's like, there's no kids involved, but yet I'm demanding an apology written for my son and also to all my friends. He told the therapist, it's like, dude, stop be playing the fucking victim. Mm-hmm. I never asked for any of that. I never even thought about any of that. Where the fuck did that come from? Mm-hmm. No, they did. They twist and they distort absolutely everything. Like it doesn't matter. I remember after catching my ex in the infidelity and I said, we need to go to counseling, but you're going to be the one that makes the attempt and plans it all and sets it all up. I'm not making the effort to do this. And then he just says, I don't want to go because you're just the, all the therapist is going to do is just side with you and then completely blame me for everything. And that's what they think. And that's what happens. Yeah. I'm like, that's because you're a douchebag and yeah. they know, but he's like, but you want that. You want somebody. I'm like, well, it'd be nice if you validated me. So if a therapist can actually get fucking through to you because I can't get through to you and I am a therapist and I still fucking can't get through to you. (laughs) So then what is, what does that mean? Right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And no, he never went. He didn't want to go because again, they have to face the shame and they don't want to face. They don't want to do that. And my ex said that my ex said that after we split up, I did nothing. I wanted to, (laughs) but I did nothing. I even to the point of he had this granola at my house and I took the bag of granola and I put it in the back of his truck. And I told my colleague who was with me, I'm like, I'm putting a hole in the back of the truck because we have blackbirds everywhere. So that way he picks it up and the granola spills everywhere. And she's like, you can't do that, Dr. Varm. That's beneath you. Don't do that. And I'm like, oh, I remember you telling me the story. I'm like, I've done nothing. (laughs) And she goes, don't do it. So I did not So I picked up the bag and as I was walking, the bag, it did explode. It just, I had it tied too tight. It did explode, but it was on the ground, on the ground. My ex told people that I vandalized his truck 
in a prison parking lot. I vandalized his truck. I slashed all of his tires. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, and you threw granola all into my car, in the car, in the bed, on the car. And there was bird shit everywhere, which I was like, God, I hope that part is true. I'm like, no, I honestly didn't. And thank goodness I heard from a friend that he was telling people that I slashed his tires and vandalized his truck and all that. But see, that's what they do because they're the poor victim. And look what she did. Well, it's like that quote. It's like, basically, it's like, I fucked up and hurt you or I did the shitty things to you and hurt you. Now you hate me. So now I'm the real victim. I'm the true victim. Yeah. Yeah. And like so my, The last thing he ever said to me was, I just don't want you to hate me. <laughs> it's like... Maybe you should have thought of that before you fucked every other chick in the city. <laughs> my, my ex friend. sent me, and I told you this, I totally had forgotten about this until I had written it down. And thankfully I did. My ex, we split up in March, tried to be friends around June, July. The last time we ever spoke, I think it was like middle of July or June 20, yeah, July 24th. And then over the holidays, he's texting me and texting me and texting me and I'm not responding and he's putting, I can't believe it's the holidays. And it's not the holidays if we're not together. Fucker, you're living with somebody else. Living with the new person. Texting me that it doesn't feel like the holidays without us together. And I can't believe you're not even talking to me. Won't you please respond? Just respond. Motherfucker, no response is a response. Yeah, I that's what I mean. Is I want nothing to do with you. You don't mean anything. You, I render you insignificant, which is the best way to get back. And you don't give a fuck about me or the holidays. You just no. hate the fact that I don't well, give a you. flying I ass, ass about you. Yeah, exactly. That's just it. It's yeah. because you don't care about them and they can't handle that. They, they can't can. handle being hated they or can. somebody not liking them. That is a narcissistic wound. That yes. is the worst thing you can do to them because they don't care about you. They care yeah. about you caring about them. about them. That's that's all it is. They care about. Exactly. So on that note, we mm -hmm. are at the end. Um, I hope I gave you some guys some, some lie, uh, some examples of lying. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want some more, you can feel free to email wcwycw one at gmail.com or leave it in the comments. Or even better, if you have a good example of a narcissistic lie, post in the comments below. Please. Yes. And if you want us to read them off in a podcast, I would love to do that and talk about different people's lies that they've had to go through. Yeah, we can pull up, we can pull up some good Q and A's from other people on, um, if you comment below or some good fucking bullshit stories that they come up with. Cause really it's embarrassing. I, and I did it. It told you guys in my last video about my ex I thought I was going to take it to the grave because I was so humiliated. My ex got married while we were together and got divorced. But while we were together, I wondered, I tried everything. I looked at his tax returns. He filed this single. I didn't know at the time that you can file single even when you're married. I thought you had to file single. So I, I thought I did my due diligence. I looked for a marriage license. I looked at his tax returns. I looked at everything that I could. I paid money online to find anything because he swore to me he wasn't married. And I even asked her, I said, send me a marriage license then if you're married. And I never heard anything. So I took him for being correct when, because people are like, well, how would you not know? I literally paid money. I literally looked at income tax returns everything that I could, that I knew. How'd you find out he was legally married then if you didn't have any documentation? Because <laughs> in October, after we had split up, we were done and over with by June, right? Or July, we were done in March, but I took him to court. And when I, the court date was in October and he had brought his new supply and she had an engagement ring on. Now we were also engaged, but so I sat down because we had to give each other our, um, uh, evidence. So I had to talk to him one-on-one -on -one. and I said, so you're getting engaged, huh? And he goes, no, she just wore that to antagonize you. I'm like, dude, I don't really care. I said, but did you get divorced? And he goes, oh yeah, a long time ago. I mean, 
saying I was never, and I'm like, <laughs> too late, dude. Cause I didn't ask it in a way like, are you married? Were you married? But, but I thought you were married, anything like that. I just said, oh, so did you get a divorce? I'm confused. Were, you said he got married while you guys were together. Yeah. But he also got divorced while we were together. How, how the hell did you ever know he was married? Because I had for one seen a, a old wedding invitation and I brought it to his attention. I found it online and he goes, she is just fucking psycho. She did that. She made up this whole thing that we're going to be married. We're not getting married. I have no desire to marry and her. Check that he was engaged to. This is, yeah, this is all bullshit. And the date on the invitation had been changed before. Cause you could see it was crossed out and a new one was there. So I thought, okay, she is kind of, and the way she treated me, she seemed pretty psycho. Like the things that she would do to me. So, and then I asked her after um, I had heard that I saw that invitation and I, it was like for the future. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, but how and when did he actually get married? Because someone said to me, well, you know, he's married. And she sent me something saying, duh, I'm his wife. And I'm like, okay, can I see a wedding uh, uh, marriage license? If you're his wife, can I see a marriage license? And she never responded. Now, if it would me were me, I would have been like, you don't need to see my wedding, my marriage license, but here, I'll show you something. You know, now get the fuck away. She backed off. Plus, she was also fucking psycho in the first place. So I asked, I was talking to his friend and I sent a picture of him and I to his friend. And she said, you know, he's married. And I'm like, he swears he's not. And she never got back to me. So when did he get married? And then I confronted him and I said, your friend says you're married. And he goes, I'm not. Why the fuck would you believe her and not me? So I went and looked it up. I looked up his tax returns. It was just him. I looked up his, um, I looked online for a marriage license. It was just, there was none. I paid money to find it. There was none. I even confronted her in an email saying, if you want me gone, show me a marriage license. So, and he's telling me that this person's full of shit and she's the only one that said it to me. So who do I believe? Well, if there's no marriage license, then they weren't married. It was a confidential marriage license. It doesn't show up. Oh, you can do that? Yeah. And I realized that after the fact, because that's what my husband and I did. If you live together for a year, you can do that. All it is, the reason why people do it is one, to hide it. Okay. Because I thought she is not the type that would hide it. She is the type that would fucking blare it everywhere. She changed her name and everything. And he's like, she changed her name, but that's not her name. And so there's no marriage license. Why did she change her name? He's like, cause she's fucking uh, all over me. As soon as you and I started going out, she became this obsessed, whatever. And she was so, I was, I was not used to that. I was not used to being with someone who was a fucking narcissist who lied about every fucking thing. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing my, what I thought was my due diligence and looking at even, especially income tax, and then after the fact, people said, you can file single when you're married. I'm like, I had no idea. I thought when you're married, you file as married. So when yeah. I saw that it was single, it kind of went, okay. You mm -hmm. know, um, when I didn't find a marriage license, I didn't even think of the, um, I did think, okay, confidential. I'm like, no, but she is like the type that would make sure that it was out there. Mm -hmm. So then I wondered after the fact, when I said to him, did you get a divorce? He was like, Oh, a long time ago. I mean, and I said, <laughs> too late, dude, you already told me. And I said, so when was it? He goes, everything you said was correct. Everything you thought was correct. The timeline was correct. That's what admitted. I was a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. But, um, because now he had nothing to lose. We weren't together anymore. So I went back and I thought, how did I let that get past me though? And I looked at the date of his wedding and I looked at my Facebook memories he was in my fucking bed the morning that he left to go to his wedding. And he was back in my bed the following weekend. Gross. So why would I not believe, you know what I mean? I'm doing my research and I didn't want to believe. Well, if you I don't. Didn't find this stuff. 
she didn't give it to me. So it must not be true. It's like, you don't, you don't want it to be true. No. So when you don't find the evidence, it's like, okay, I'm going to believe you're going to, well, you all, you want to believe the stuff that's not going to hurt you. Right. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, but that was like, he used his dad dying to be with her. Yeah, that's fucked. That's like, that's, that's, that goes beyond narcissism. That's just fucked up. And it's like, why also would you think that somebody who says, I'm going to go to see my kids today. Why would you think it's actually a wedding? You know what I mean? Because they come out of your bed, getting dressed, saying, okay, I'm going to go. I'm off to see my kids. It's like, okay, so he's not getting married. I mean, marriage is a huge thing. And then I met someone at work who was telling me, oh my God, his marriage was big. I helped him plan it. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> See, that's awful. That's terrible. But I'm just like, you know, I fucking dodged a bullet, man. I dodged a bullet. I think they were married for a couple of years because she ended up moving. And one day I got his phone from his truck. I was getting something out of his truck and I saw his phone and I saw this long ass message from her that I should have sent to myself, but I didn't want it. <laughs> and it was all about how things didn't work out because of her, because you were too consumed with her because we never had a chance because of her. I think I'm the her. So uh, I think it's just as bad for her on her end. Uh, and I can empathize with her if she wasn't such a, excuse me, people hate this word, but I don't. If she wasn't such a fucking cunt to me. And she was. If she yeah. was halfway decent, I would have called her once I found out and said, hey, I got fucked over too. And I'm really sorry you did. It was not ever my intention. He was lying to us both. However, mm -hmm. she is, I fully a hundred percent believe she is that one person that, you know, NPDs have that one person that stays with them. That one supply that will sit there as they cycle through other supplies that doesn't leave. And I yeah. think it's her. Oh yeah, for sure. Because she went and helped his mom. She moved up North to help his mom. Yeah. So he said, I don't know, but, um, yeah, they're good at lying, mm -hmm. good at lying. And I kick myself all the time, but then I thought I did my due diligence. You know, there's only so much when somebody is telling you, no, 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 they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. And you don't find any evidence to prove they're right. And you even ask them. Well, my ex-husband's dad had an entire family on the side and running three different vet clinics in Lower Mainland. So how he managed to find the fucking time to do that and have three kids with his other woman and then had two kids of his own in his first God. They do. And my ex had the best alibi too. Cause when you're at work, you're not supposed to have your phone with you. Mm -hmm. So if I'm working till 10 o'clock and you can't call me. Yeah. That there you go. So he, Hey, he could always get away with it. Yeah. So okay. it wasn't as hard as it sounds because right. of the job and all of that. But yeah, it's, it's not, I'm not proud of it but I know I did my due diligence and I left him as soon as I knew, as soon as I confirmed this guy is MPD and not just Asperger's, I was done. I was out. It was over. Yeah. It just took 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> In yeah. 10 years. <laughs> Anyways. So yes, if you have lies, if you have other things, we have more MPD Q and a, if you have any questions on NPD, email or leave it in the comments. Remember to click the, the little bell to get notifications of when we drop episodes. Like, share, follow. What else? I don't know. That's it. Anything else? Oh, and if you guys have suggestions for Brie to get some really cool cups, some oh, really yeah. cool vessels of alco for alcohol. <laughs> Lovely. Let us know. Let us know. And thank you guys so much across again. I was checking on our other um, platforms just to make sure the videos were the, the podcasts were going out and stuff. So I don't say it and I haven't said it. So I'm going to say it tonight. Thank you. Besides YouTube, we are everywhere that podcasts are hosted. I believe all the major ones I do know. So thank you to everyone who subscribes on Spotify, on Apple on Amazon on Google Podcasts is going to be gone. I don't, they are getting rid of Google Podcasts, I think in May, mm -hmm. but iHeartRadio, everywhere that people listen to us besides YouTube, thank you so much. We appreciate it. 
and um, we'll see you in two weeks. That's good. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye.